everybody. I'm a Renaissance Mama and today we're making pie. So fall is here and with it come the holidays and one of the greatest things I think to bring to a family event or uh, an event with friends or coworkers is a homemade pie. Lots of people don't make pie anymore and I'm going to show you how. My mom gave me the easiest recipe many many years ago and I've been doing it ever since. So we're going to make two kinds of pie today. We're going to make blueberry pie and I'm using frozen blueberries. If you can pick your own as an outside activity in the summer, that's great. It's a lot of fun and you can freeze them. I like to do that. Keep a few quarts in my refrigerator. And I have um, eight apples peeled and cut into slices. Slices are about that big. You don't want your pie to be total mush. About eight, uh, between six and eight cups. If you have a deep dish pie plate like I do, you want about eight cups so you have a little bit of a mound to your pie. If it isn't a deep dish pie pan, then about six cups of fruit is fine. So once you have your fruit ready to go, we're going to use the juice of one lemon for both pies, half each. So I'm going to roll the lemon on the table and press on it to get a little juice out. Make the lemon easier to squeeze. And I'm just going to cut the lemon in the middle. And I'm going to hold the lemon upside down on my hand and I'm going to squeeze and my hand, the uh, bottom hand will catch all the seeds. I've already started preheating my stove. I have a compost bowl back here. I started preheating my stove to 375 degrees. I'm going to toss the fruit a little bit to get all the lemon juice on there. You don't want your apples to turn brown. I'm going to do the same thing with our blueberries. The lemon just gives a little brightness to the pie, to the blueberry pie, and for the apples it keeps them from turning brown. Grab a towel here and another spoon. I don't want to use my hands for the blueberries because then my hands are, will be purple. If you do have um, a citrus uh, reamer or a juicer instead of doing the juice in your hand you can. I'm just a little lazy and I don't like to wash dishes so if I can do something three things with one dish that's great or if I can use my hands that's even better. Okay so the flavor in an apple pie obviously we're going to use some cinnamon so that's going to give it a real fall flavor. Just a couple of shakes and with my blueberry pie I'm using a little bit of vanilla. So you can use about two teaspoons and I'm just eyeballing it I've been doing it so long but two teaspoons of vanilla ought to do it so I'm going to stir those up oh, wrong spoon. so that this flavor gets all over the berries or all over the apples there we go now I'm going to put in each bowl a half a cup of sugar this is a low sugar pie so someone who's watching their sugar, or maybe they're a diabetic, um, could have a small slice of this and not have to worry too much. And I'm using turbinado sugar. You can use any kind of sugar you like. I prefer the raw uh, sugar if I get it. Turbinado is great. So I'm gonna mix the sugar up with it now. Get the sugar all over those berries. The berries are sweet enough and the apples are delicious. I'm using a combination of honey crisp. That's my oven telling me it's ready. Uh, the honey crisp and gala and ambrosia apples. They're really sweet. They have a lot of body to them so they're not gonna become mush in the oven. And just the little bit of sugar takes some tartness away but you really want to taste the fruit. If you put a lot of sugar in, a lot of um, pie recipes call for a cup or more of sugar. And what happens is you get mostly like jelly in there and you're getting just that sweet gummy stuff. And we want really to taste our berries. So now we're going to add some flour. And I'm going to move my sugar out of the way. I'm using um, unbleached flour, all-purpose flour. And you're just going to put in a third of a cup. This is just to help hold your fruit together. It could be a heaping cup, that's fine. I'm putting a third in each one. 
and then I'm going to mix up my fruit again. Anytime you're cooking with blueberries, to keep your blueberries from turning your batter, a cake batter, a muffin batter, anything um, purple or gray sometimes, if you coat your berries with flour first before you put them into the batter, it will help make the blueberry pop in the batter. You'll just see the berry and not all the purple juices. So I'm going to set that aside. And after I stir up the apples, we're going to get to make the easiest pie crust you'll ever make. When I taught preschool and pre-K during the holidays, we would make pies. And on National Pie Day, we would make pies. And this pie crust is so easy, your four-year-old can make it. I love to cook with children. My kids all cook. I'm going to move this over here. And that's great because they've learned that um, you don't have to go to a restaurant for a great meal and you can save yourself a lot of money if you're not eating out. I'm going to wipe off my table a little bit because we're going to need it to be clear because we're going to roll out our dough onto a piece of plastic wrap. So you will need some plastic wrap for this dough. So I have my bowl. Now I'm doing two pies, so I'm giving you the double recipe or I'm making the double recipe. You can easily cut it in half. One half will make you a double crust pie. So I'm going to put in three and a half cups of flour for a double batch. It's normally one and three quarters cups. Great math. My home ec teacher would be appalled that I am flattening my cup with my hand, but again, a little too lazy. So three and a half cups. If you're doing a single pie, one pie, it's one and three quarters. Pies really, they're not a lot of work, but you do have to cut the fruit and it takes time. So I would make two at a time or more, and then I put some in the freezer. It's a great gift to give someone when you're going to visit or you know, taking it to someone who just lost a, a loved one or perhaps they're ill. Um, that's a nice way to show that you care. So one pinch of salt for a single batch. Since I'm doing a double, I'm gonna put in two pinches. And then I'm going to get a fork. Sorry, I don't have a fork. Let me get something that I can use. What can I use? I'm just going to use a whisk. Normally I would do this with a fork. I was not prepared. Sorry. All right. So no lard, no butter, no cutting in. This is going to be as easy, easier even than making Play-Doh. So for a single batch, it's a half a cup of I use canola oil. The recipe calls for vegetable oil, but canola oil works really well, and it's healthier for you than a vegetable oil. So for a double batch, I'm gonna use one full cup of oil. And we also need a third of a cup of water for a single batch. In my case, I'm using two thirds of a cup of water. Okay, and pour it in. And then you just want to stir it up with your fork. And it should, the texture should be a soft Play-Doh like texture. Like right out of the jar when your child gets that package of Play-Doh or you got a package of Play-Doh when you were a kid. It was nice and soft, it wasn't hard, it didn't have hard crunchy lumps in it. You want it nice and soft. If it's too thick, if it's too if it's not mushy enough, don't add more oil. Add water, a little bit at a time, okay? But it shouldn't be, you shouldn't need too much more. Sometimes if you don't measure your flour properly, you will need a little extra water. All right, so I have this nice big ball of dough. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna roll it out. And I'm gonna take my damp cloth, I'm gonna damp washcloth or dish towel, and wet down your table so that your plastic wrap sticks. You can use parchment. It does not stick as well as plastic wrap. I normally use parchment, but because it doesn't stick as well, I wanted to show you what it really calls for, which is plastic wrap. Not a big fan of plastic myself. So for the bottom crust, we want a ball of dough about the size of a softball, maybe a little bit less. Bigger than a baseball, 
because the bottom you need a little extra dough. All right, so there's my ball of dough. And I'm going to take another piece of plastic wrap on top, and I'm going to lay it over the top of my dough. I'm going to roll it out, squashing it down a little bit first to a nice flat circle, and roll it out. And if you're not sure if it's going to fit in your pan, because you have the plastic wrap on there, you can always turn your pan upside down on the wrap to see if you need to keep rolling. This crust is really easy to piece together, so if you have an area that rips or you have an area that you don't have enough in, but you have one area where it's, you know, hanging over the side, it's easy to, to kind of pinch it together. You don't need any extra water or oil. It's just like Play-Doh. So I'm going to check to see if that'll fit my circle. I can see I'm going to have to piece it apart together, but I don't want to roll it too thin. So I'm not going to roll it out anymore. I'll just do the piecemeal together. So then I'm going to take, I took the top layer of the plastic off. I'm going to put my pie on pie plate on top, upside down. Lifting the plastic up, I put my hand underneath and flip it over. I think I flung a little piece of dough. There we go. So now I have a little extra dough on the edges so I can fix my holes in the crust, no problem. Make sure you push down the crust because once you put the fruit in there, you don't want the fruit to poke a hole. If the fruit pokes a hole, then you'll have all the juices underneath making your crust soggy. And that's not what we want. We don't want a soggy crust, right? So take care of your dough before you put your fruit in. All right. So now I'm going to move this over here, and I'm going to do my second crust. So again, I'm going to wipe down the table. Make a softball size ball of dough. The water, the wet of the table, helps that plastic wrap stick so it doesn't roll around while you're rolling. If you don't have a rolling pin, a heavy piece of dowel, or even a, a soda bottle, a big two liter bottle, helps. But make sure you do it after you drink the soda, otherwise your soda will explode. You can refill the bottle with water after it's empty and take the wrapper off, take the paper off. All right, so we're gonna roll this one out. And keep changing the direction you roll so your dough is even. If you just roll in one direction, you might find that you have areas that are much thicker than others. And it's better, I like to roll on a table, especially when little kids are rolling, it's great because it's a little bit lower, you can get a little bit more weight on your dough, okay? So I'm pick that up, put my pie plate down on, on top of it, upside down, and flip it over. All right, pull that one off. Oh, didn't fall on the floor. There is no such thing as a five second rule. If it falls on the floor, get a new piece. Last thing you want is your next door neighbor to love your gift until she gets a dog hair in it or a cat hair. Or I tie my hair back when I'm cooking. You don't want a person hair in there either. All right. All right, so now I have my two crusts ready. This needs to go down there. And I'm gonna pour my fruit in. apples in there. And guys, let me tell you, if you're watching this movie or this video, if you're trying to impress a girl's family, take a homemade pie. They will love you forever. My kids know pie is the way to someone's heart. So. These pies freeze beautifully both before or after they're baked. If you're going to freeze them before 
you bake them, you will need to fully defrost them before you try to do the baking. All right. So I'm going to roll out the tops now. I'm going to use a slightly smaller ball of dough for the top because we don't have to fit it down in. So I'm going to wipe my top off again, my table. I always get a clean cloth before I start. That way I don't have any dishwater debris or anything in my pie. And this is a great thing to do on a cool morning or a fall, rainy day. All right, so I'm going to take this ball. It's a little bit smaller than the one on the inside. bottom crust, it's really just sealing the juices in. Alright, so I'm going to grab my blueberry pie, I'm gonna move it over here, Whoop. and I'm going to flip this on top, straighten it out before you take the plastic off. It's really hard to move it once you pull the plastic off. All right. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the edges and some people crimp it with a fork. Some people use special pie tools. I just roll it. I like to I want to make sure that the edges are really sealed because you do want to keep the juices inside the pie. If they do bubble over, having a pan underneath your pies, pie pans in the oven will probably help keep your oven from smoking because if the juices fall on the bottom, they will burn. Because of the natural sugar in the berry or the fruit and as well as the sugar you added. So now I'm just going to poke a couple of holes in the top to vent the steam out, okay? Let's set that aside. And now we're gonna do the apple pie. Make the top for the apple pie. Put that off there. Wipe down the tabletop. Plastic down. All the dough in the middle and roll it out. Nowadays, hardly anybody makes pie. And if you go to Walmart, you make a pie like this and then get one from Walmart. Same kind, whatever kind it is. Whether it's apple pie or blueberry pie or peach pie, now's a great time for peaches. You will find that most of what's in a store-bought pie is canned pie filling and a lot of that canned pie filling has very little fruit mostly that jelly kind of gummy syrupy stuff this is going to be full of fresh fruit it might even still be warm when you take it to your friend or you serve it to your guests and nothing shows you care more than a, something homemade And look at that just rolling the edges and it didn't take much time at all now I did prep the fruit in advance that took me about 15 minutes to peel and slice and the berries are super easy especially if you buy the frozen bag of berries let's pinch that side together and there's our apple pie and we're gonna put a couple holes in the apple pie also for venting now my oven is hot it already told me so so I'm going to get a cookie sheet to put my pies on because I don't want it dripping on my the bottom of my oven. It will smoke up my house. And we're going to stick these in the oven. And 
through the magic of video, we have two completely finished pies. There's our apple and our blueberry. Bon appetit, everybody. Happy pie.